Hi there, welcome to Bite Size Piano. In this tutorial, I'm going to give you five interesting um, exercises um, that are going to make your fingers work. And they're gonna work on a few different things like strengthen, particularly uh, the weaker parts of your hands, um, your overall hand strength, your coordination between the hands, and just practicing moving around the piano in different ways. So some exercises are gonna be a bit trickier than others. Um, but I'll show you ways you can make them easier. For example, you could only maybe practice them in um, hands separately. So before we dive in... Hello, my name is Francesca and I'm a teacher here at Bite Size Piano. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. I'd love to have you here learning from my piano tutorials. Please give the video a like if you enjoy it and that it's useful. I do take piano tutorial requests, so if you would like to request one from me, Stick around to the end of the video with our instructions on how you can do that. Here on Bite Size Piano I make all sorts of tutorials, so um, go have a rummage around my channel, see what else you can learn, make sure to hit the notifications bell, and I've left a few playlists in the description below to get you started. And finally, thank you to everyone who chooses to support Bite Size Piano on Patreon and other avenues. You know who you are, thank you very much, it's really appreciated. If you are interested in supporting the channel in that way, um, the links are in the description below. So, let's dive in. First things first, you need to look at your nails and if they are too long, so if they're poking out um, above your fingers like that, you need to cut them because you won't have the best technique when playing these exercises. So the first one, um, I've just called it trills. So we're just going to be playing these on the white notes and I'll go over my right hand first. To be honest, it doesn't really matter which note you play on, but for it to sound nice, I'm going to start with my thumb and my right hand on middle C. So I'll show you this hand separately first and then you could just leave it there or you could then try it hands together. Trill. So a trill is where you play two notes like that, so back and forth. That's a trill. So the exercise goes one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and then you're gonna go two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three, and then you're gonna go up again. Three, four, three, four, three, four, three, four, four, five, four, five, four, five, four, five. And it comes back down. So make sure that your wrists are raised and that you are trying to play on your fingertips as much as possible. Can you see that I'm exaggerating my finger movement a little bit? Instead of, I'll be going like this. You can hear the mechanics of my keys a little bit, so I'm sorry for that. Exaggerating your finger movement in that way, so making more movement helps with clarity with the notes. So particularly between these fingers here. So your fourth finger, if you're not already aware, is the most rubbishest finger on each hand <laughs> because it needs the movement of your middle finger or your little finger to move properly. I guess it shares ligaments or muscles or tendons or whatever um, with those fingers. So it's not, it doesn't move very well independently you do need to build up the muscles, very small muscles, in the hands there in order for you to be able to comfortably move it without putting your other fingers down. So we'll try it in the left hand now. So you're gonna start with your little finger on C. We're gonna do the exact same pattern. So once you're comfortable with it hands separately, you can then try it hands together. You can either try it in contrary motion, which is using the same fingers at the same time. So like this. similar motion where you're playing the same notes at the same time so this one it will be slightly more challenging
Notice that I'm accenting the first um, of every trill. Now I'm going to go on to the next one. So this is a whole tone scale, so we're going to be moving around a little bit more. So I'll teach you this hand separately. So a whole tone scale sounds a little bit magical. Like that. So it's a scale made up of whole tones. <laughs> so a whole tone are two notes next to each other that have a note in between them. So we'll start it from E. So you pop your one on E, then two, three, four, you'll swing under to C, and then two, under to E, two, three, four, five. Let's do that again. And then you would go under with your two, one, four. So this bit here is is a good part of the exercise. You can carry on going down using the same finger pattern. So in the left hand, you're going to start with your little finger on an E. You're just going to use up all your fingers first. And then you'll go over with your two, one. So you're using the same fingers as the right hand. So you always go over with your four when you approach the three back notes. And under on your four. One, two, under one. Four, one, two, one. So do that again. together so you could leave it there hands separate but let's try it hands together if you wanted to make it sound even more interesting you could just keep the pedal down if you have a sustain pedal or a sustain setting on your keyboard or piano into the next one. We're going back to playing all the white notes. So I'm calling this um, alternating thirds. So again, I'll teach it in the right hand first and we're still just gonna be in the C position. Just cause if we're using all the white notes, it makes sense to play in the key of C major. We're gonna be al using alternating fingers. This is a very good exercise for strengthening just generally your hand in general. So you're gonna play one and three and then you're gonna alternate the fingers. So that'll be your two and a four next. And then alternate your fingers again, so it'll be three and five. Back to two and four. Back to one and three. And you're just in like a loop, like this. If you can, try and play them as I'm playing them, what's called legato, which is closing the gap as you go from chord to chord. So you can practice playing with the gap first just to get the coordination between the fingers and then once you've cracked that you can then play legato. So there's a slight overlap in legato and true legato. So in the left hand you could either again with your little finger on C you can either do the same fingers, so one and three, like your right hand. So it would be one and three, two and four, three and five, two and four, one and three. And then just up and down like that. Now let's try that hands together. So make sure again that you're 
comfortable with it hands separately before you try it hands together. So we're gonna try it in contrary motion first, so we're using the same fingers at the same time. So one and threes. Sounds quite nice this one as an exercise as well. Two and fours, three and fives. Let's try it in similar motion, so use playing the same notes at the same time this time. You can try and get faster. You could if you wanted to play try playing it staccato. So the opposite of legato. So where you're making the note sound, sound short and crisp and you're detaching it from the next notes or notes. So you would brace your fingers on the notes you're about to pluck if you like first and then spring off. So you're like aiming, like placing and then pinging off instead of, instead of that. So you need to like plan your movement first, touch it and then spring off, touch it and then spring off. So on to the fourth exercise, we're going to have a look at playing through inversion chords. So I've done a whole video explaining inversion chords and what they are in depth, so I've left that in the description below. Uh, so go and watch that if you're interested in the theory behind it. Um, but I'm just going to teach you like the patterns today. We... So again, using C major, we'll do it in the right hand first. We're going to play through the inversions of C major. And you can try this on lots of different chords as well. So it's C, uh, C, E and G. And you're going to use your 1, 3 and 5. And then you're going to play your first inversion, which is E, G and C. And you're going to use your 1, 2 and 5. So, so far we have... Then I'm going to play a second inversion, which is G, C, and E, with your 1, 3, 5 again, and then back up to there, root position, an octave higher. So we have, and you can come down. So this is a really good one for practicing chord changes. So root position, first inversion, second inversion, root position, second inversion, second. First inversion, <laughs> root position. And then left hand, the same again. So, one, three, five. It'll be different this time, so it'll be one, three, five again. And then one, two, five. So I'm choosing the fingers that line up naturally with those notes. Fingers are really, really important to encourage you to play the right notes. It doesn't make sense to use your second finger there because your third finger is naturally lays above that note instead. It doesn't make sense to use your third finger there because your second finger is more natural in that position there. So again, once you've cracked this hand separately, you can then try it hands together. Try extending it. You could as well try adding shape, dynamic shape. So as you go, the rule of thumb is as you go higher up the piano, you get a little bit louder. And as you go back down again, you get a little bit softer. So it just adds this shape. You could also try it on a different triad, so let's try it on A minor this time. Using the exact same fingers as the one before. So this final exercise um, is actually taken from um, a set of what's called Hanan exercises. So the one I've chosen to do is Hanan number six. 
So I'll just play a snippet for you now. As you can see there, I was just playing one pattern and then moving my hands up each time. Again, just playing all the white notes. So I'm gonna teach you the pattern in the right hand first, just as we've been doing it. And then I'll teach you it in the left hand and you can either just leave it there or you can attempt it hands together. So the pattern goes, if I start on, on C, so I wanna go one, and then put my little finger six notes above that one. So you're going up a sixth with your five. So one, five, four, five, three, five, two, five. So as you can already tell, this is gonna be really good for your weaker fingers, this exercise. So I'll do that again. Then your thumb moves in, up a sixth, repeat the pattern. And again. And wanna go up to this G. And then coming down, you're gonna play that G again. And then bring your two in. Two, one, three, one, four, one. Bring your little finger down, down a sixth. So you're traveling by extending your thumb each time. down one more to make it sound more finished. And you can just finish it off something like that if you want it to sound finished. <laughs> so I'll just do that up and down a little bit quicker. Make sure you slightly exaggerate your finger movements. If it helps as well, move your wrist back and forth. Now it's time for the left hand's turn. I'm gonna start lower down. So we're gonna ascend first, so it's the exact same pattern. So it'll be five, and then a sixth above that note. Two, one, three, one, four, one. Extend a sixth. that G and then repeat that G now I'm gonna come down so you're gonna move your little finger a sixth below that note so this is where it's really gonna work your left hand weaker fingers again try and exaggerate your finger movement and move your wrist from side to side if you think that might help any other fingers down. The aim should be making every note have its own clarity. Now we're going to try that hands together. So I'll come down here first. You can have a go at doing one octave or two octaves. Again, it's just a repeated pattern up and down the piano.
that a bit quicker. reached the end of all the exercise and your finger gym. I've created these exercises so I feel that they all practice something a little bit different. You're playing varied exercises so working all the little muscles in each part of your hand and hopefully you should notice a difference in your playing as well. So that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it and that it's useful. If you'd like to leave a piano tutorial request you need to click on this video which takes you through to my official request space. You do need to be subscribed. All requests are noted and considered. So I look forward to seeing you over there.